And then are you able to add the live trans transcripts? Yes, I can. Perfect, okay. For those who don't know, there are uh, ways where you can see uh, subtitles on the very bottom. Um, just so if there's ever a time you're ever writing notes and you don't know kind of where we're at, the subtitles actually help sort of what was said the last sentence. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll try to enunciate as well as we can so that the closed captioning doesn't uh, see. It would have turned what I just, my little, uh, I'm already messing up. So you'll, you'll see it when <laughs> you, uh, you'll see it when uh, we send out the recording. Awesome. These captions are nice. <laughs> okay. All right, well, maybe just give it another minute. Um, let me get started. I think another thing that we'll start to also do is get people's feedback on music that they like to do, like they like to listen to. Uh, I'd like to really build a Spotify playlist so that uh, as we're going through these trainings, we also spice it up with music. So. That's a good idea. That sounds yeah. nice. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I like this music. It's um, it's really calming and chill. I'm I'm cool with this music. Nick, what about you? How how how? Uh, what type of music do you like? Uh, I listen to rap, anything, rap, country, even and even though I don't speak Spanish, there's a lot of Mexican music that I like to listen to just because the beat of it and and the, the the instrumentals of it is just really nice. It's it's sometimes soothing, sometimes upbeat. It just depends. But lately, I've been listening to a lot of Tom McDonald. Okay. Very nice. Right here. Okay, well, it's 5.05. Um, don't want to keep you all waiting too long. So let's go ahead and get this uh, training session on the road. Um, so thank you, everyone, for hopping on. I'm really excited to... Uh, be working alongside all of you in uh, getting our climate leaders program up and running. Um, I hope you all are excited, just like I am, that and uh, that you'll all be going out into the community and you know bringing awareness and uh, bringing awareness to the climate issues that are affecting South Stockton. So, with that, um, I think a good quick introduction is in order, um, since many of you probably are meeting each other for the first time. And so, with that. Uh, we'll start off with me and Jonathan doing the introductions and then we'll uh, just kind of popcorn. So what we're gonna do is we'll do um, our name, our pronouns, um, for me and Jonathan at least, where we work. Um, if you would like to include that, that's great, uh, but not, not necessarily required, either where you work or go to school. And then we'll do an icebreaker question. And the icebreaker question is, who is someone you look up to and why? It could be a, uh, could be a civil rights leader, teacher, friend or family member. And I will put that in the chat. So uh, um, I'll go first. So I'm William Metzenberg. My pronouns are he and him. And I work as the uh, program manager of Public Health Advocates running the TCC Stockton Rising program, which is overseeing the Climate for Leaders program that you are all a part of. And for my icebreaker question or my icebreaker response, uh, someone that I look up to is um i really look up to gosh this is a hard question actually now that i think about it um i'm gonna just say that i really look up to um all i mean I, i'll just be generic and just say I, I look up to all of you um i really you know want to learn from all of you as much as you all 
I hope want to learn from me and Jonathan and the rest of our TCCs uh, partners. So, um, and I think that you all taking the initiative and uh, coming up here or coming on here to spend an hour and 30 minutes of your time to become a climate leader is really amazing. And it's what inspires me. So, and I think is worthy of being looked up to. So with that, I will popcorn over to Jonathan. Thanks, Will. Um, Jonathan Pruitt, I am uh, he, him, his. I am the program coordinator at Catholic Charities Diocese of Stockton. Um, my icebreaker answer would be uh, Cesar Chavez. Um, yeah, let, let me, let's turn it over to Rain. Hi everyone, my name is Rain Romeo and my pronouns are she, hers. I'm currently not working. My parents don't want me to work yet until I turn 18, which will be soon, February 14th, also known as Valentine's Day. And um, I'm currently a high school student and someone who inspires me. And I feel like this also kind of um, somewhat, somewhat like correlates to um, Jonathan's too. He was also part of the United Farm Workers Movement and it's Larry Ithleong and they work together to protest against grapes too and um, equal rights for farm workers. And the reason why I look up to him is because I'm very passionate about my culture. I'm Filipino American. And he also has that connection to Stockton. So I feel like his legacy continues to inspire me to continue to advocate for Stockton and my community. I forgot to popcorn. Uh, I popcorn to Reina. Also really quick, I'm sorry, uh, just really quick. Um, if you haven't been popcorned yet, can you just put like, the raise hand function? And then that way hopefully it'll help make it easier for people to kind of pick uh, who's next? Hello, everyone. My name is Raina. My pronouns is are she, hers, and I work at a lab um, in Salida, a dermatology lab. And um, someone that I look up to is my dad. Um, he has sacrificed so much for myself and my siblings. So yes, um, the next person, wait, how do I, I want to say Nick. Hi, my name is Nick. Um, I actually work for like three separate nonprofits, uh, the Echo, Echo Chamber, Red Ra Rabbit, and uh at well h j o c and then uh the d o c is getting ready to or c o c is getting ready to pull my wife and i on their organization as well so we're all over the place uh but we're just trying to be functional to the point where we get the word out on the unsheltered and try to get help for the people that i feel feel like they don't have a voice so, you know, I'm, I'm working on a lot of that. Um, but my, the person I look up to the most, well, I still look up to him. He's kind of passed away, but my grandfather, um, he's always been an open person to, you know, willing to go speak, willing to go talk uh, in Kings County in Hanford, where I'm from. He actually ran for assembly member at one time, and I was a part of that campaign. I was young, but I was a part of that campaign too. So him is, is a lot of who I look up to and try to strive to be more like. Very cool, Nick. Uh, let me turn it over to Anthony. Anthony Robinson Jr. with the Echo Chamber. Uh, someone I look up to uh, nowadays, I would have to say, is uh, Dane Calloway, uh, YouTube scholar, uh, somebody that trusts. Reason being, uh, he's correcting a lot of the misinformation as it concerns so called Blacks and their Aboriginal uh, really in Indian status. And it took me 41 years. And on my 31st birthday, having a conversation with my father just due to some of the research 
that Dan Calloway has proven. And one reason why I look in his research, he uses primary source documents that he probably spent well over $50,000 of his own funds to go and get from the National Archive to go buy back from a lot of these libraries that held our documents, really uh, linking our, our indigenous ancestry to this land in America, not Africa, but to here in America. So for that, I know that he's putting his life, his career in the, in the well-being of his family on the line every single day when he YouTubes and puts this information out there. So for that reason, I, I hold respect for him for certain. Anthony, you want to turn over, son? Okay. From the hand, I think uh, Demaris. I see that hand still up. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Damaris, also pronounced as Damaris. Um, just try your best. I'm cool with. I'm cool with whatever you can do. Um, I'm 19 years old. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a student. Um, I would say someone, someone that I look up to is kind of a hard question, but for me, I would have to say um, a teacher I had sophomore year of high school. Um, she was a really amazing person. She always looked out for all of her students. Um, I know she had quite a few of them, um, but as much as she could, she, um, made sure to establish a little bit of a relationship with her students and she made for she made sure to be very encouraging and take the time out of her day out of her work life to um make sure everyone understood um the assignment how to do it um and the students that needed a little bit more help with english she went out of her way to um sort of translate for them as well because she was bilingual she spoke English and Spanish. We had a few Spanish students in that class. Um, so I just thought she was just an amazing person. You know, I was like 15 and I was just like, wow, you know, I want to be like her one day because she was just so outspoken and she has such a passion for um, students of Stockton to learn. And I was like, I had never, I had never really seen that before, especially at my high school. Um, and that really inspired me to become someone like her. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Damaris. Uh, let me turn over to Euphrosina. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Euphrosina Pacheco. Um, I'm currently a junior in high school, um, and my pronouns are she, hers. Um, someone that I would say I look up to is um, a um, really big advocate in the farm working community, um, Luis Magaña. I got to actually interview him last summer and I learned a lot about him. I had learned, um, I had heard a little bit about him before from my family because they actually work in the fields and um, a lot of them really look up to him and look um, to him as someone who, you know, really helps that community. And I really hope to be, you know, some kind of um, leader like he, how like he is. Great, thank you. And last but not least, uh, Patricia. I think it's Patricia Baird. Yep, she is. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Pat. My pronouns are she, they. Um, I could go on with a few of them, but um, I work for NAMI California. Um, I work under the Crisis Counselor Outreach for uh, FEMA and SAMHSA combined. They're, they're funding it. And um, I go out to everybody and just explain COVID and the outcomes and the pros and cons and deal with the fears. And in the meantime, I forget who was talking. That was, um, somebody says they go talk with their, their wife. Um, there's another webinar, if you ever want the information, ask me, it's called CAR, CARE, CAR, CARE. And, uh, Today we were talking about what can be done about the homeless. So um, they're always looking for people's opinions. But that's what I do. And I am a chair on behavioral health services. I am chair on the mayor's task force for people with disabilities. I am vice chair on the housing authority. Um, I'm a, I love advocating and I love going to board meetings and city councils and other board meetings and giving them my three minutes. On my opinion. 
Uh, Pat, what's your, uh, what is someone you look up to? Uh, I used to look up to my dad. He's gone now, but he was, he was the man, you know, went from, from poor to rich and adopted three kids and, you know, never missed a beat on anything. He was a good man. Thank you, Pat, for sharing that. Um, it's great to hear everyone's backgrounds, everyone's interests, and um, thank you for sharing those you look up to. I'm glad we have a few people that are connected in some way with who they look into, look up to. Um, so with that, we like to start the, really start the, I guess, this, this, uh, this group with a presentation on TCC. Um, and actually beforehand, I know it's going to be a slide anyway, so I might as well just like get it out of the way. We always, every time we're in these group settings, we don't do group photos. And so I really wanted to make sure that we have sort of a way to showcase that this meeting is happening. Um, and we have a really good group. I, am, I mean, I'm really proud of sort of how we're I'm able to get something going. And so I'm going to ask if, if it's okay, if we can get a um, picture going um, for those who would like to be on camera, that would be great. If not, totally fine. Um, let's see. William, can you take the picture? Because I don't have a good uh, So I'm um, just like, Yes, I can take the picture. Just let me, I, I just can't like screenshot it directly from Zoom. So let me just. Do you have an Apple then, computer? No, I have a PC. So hold on. Sorry. I'm like <laughs> looking it up. <laughs> um, all right, Windows shift. Okay. Um, all right, cool. I think I can do this. All right. So if you're able to show your face or want to show your face, uh, let's go for it. And if not, that's totally fine. I'll take the picture in five seconds. So let me count down. Um, so three, oh, just kidding. Okay. Um, let's, sorry. Um, all right, let's go. Three, two, one. All right, I grabbed it. So I'll uh, I'll uh, share that with Jonathan and the rest Great. of you. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put all of these pictures in a thing. I mean, if it wasn't for virtual, we would take a whole group picture and you know in an actual group setting in person. But unfortunately, we can't do this. So this is the best we got. Um, all right, now let's get to the actual nitty gritty. Um, William, do you want to share your screen? We go from there. Or would you like me to share my screen? I think uh, you'll have to share your screen. Okay, cool. We could do that. Um, If you guys have any questions regarding it, please let me know. Please stop me. Um, it is going to be uh, somewhat of a challenge to be able to see those who are putting in the chat because I have two screens, two monitors. So do be aware. Um, I can monitor the chat if anyone's please, posting. Thank you so much. Else. And then we can switch when it's time. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. You guys can see this, correct? Great. Um, so as we see on the very first page, Stockton Rising Climate Leaders Orientation. This is the second one, but this is more, uh, one where we're gonna provide more detail um, in regards to what we're gonna see coming up throughout the, um, the trainings. Um, and of course, this program would not be what it is today without the city of Stockton, um, California Strategic Growth Council and the California Department of Conservation. And we did group picture. So to give you sort of an overview of what Stockton Rising is, um, it is a program that's run by the city and its partners, which um, we will share with you in a little bit. Um, they share or they seek to achieve major environmental health and economic benefits. And they do that by seven projects and then four transformative plants, which we'll go more in depth in the next slides. 
And the Stockton Rising is funded by a Transforma Climate Communities Program, or in short, TCC. Um, we will make sure um, in the future, a lot of this work does entail acronyms, but we will always write them out because it is important to always write out uh, acronyms just for consistency and also ease of um, um, being able to understand what it is entirely um, because sometimes it can be hard. And it's administered by the California Strategic Growth Council or SGC and supported by the California Department of Conservation DO. Well, so that has three acronyms already in this one sentence. This is a map that provides sort of what the Stockton Rising Project area is located. Um, for you to be able to see exactly the, this map in a bigger sense, um, maybe Will, if you wanted to include where you can find that uh, on the actual TCC website from the city of Stockton, you can go more in depth of where this is located at. Um, I'm not entirely sure if you know where to actually find this specific map, um, but maybe we can include that in the chat later. But as you can see, a lot of it encompasses Conway Homes, Sierra Vista, um, downtown, um, areas in Charter Way, areas on 8th Street um, and Main Street. And in this map, what we see, it provides more a, of a visual on where this community, what was the reason for this community to be chosen. Um, this map provides uh, a view of the Calaviro screen for uh, 3.0 results. Um, and we'll go more into depth on Cal, Cal and virus screen in the later set in later training sessions. Uh, but to give you pretty much an overview, it's a state um, utilized uh, mapping tool that provides context as to areas um, and displays those areas as disadvantaged. Um, and it's based off of a scale from you know one to a hundred percent. And higher it goes, uh, the redder it gets, the lower it goes, um, it comes to become green. In this area in Stockton, um, in South Stockton, it's of course one of the highest actually in Calumbrow screen. It's I think on average is 90 percentile, um, which is very high. And a lot of those areas entail a lot of sort of factors that come into place to why this area is considered in the red. Um, and we'll go more into depth, but let's say a lot of it has to do with pollution. A lot of it has to do with um, economic reasons. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, sort of education um, opportunities. And a lot of it also has to do with water quality um, and um, Pesticides is another another one that's included into this thing, but we'll go more into depth on that, but that's sort of what I wanted to provide. And if this Stockton area is approximately five square uh, square miles, which is a big, it's a, it's a big area. This is your team. And so you guys will see us for this whole year. Um, you know, we have William, of course, who is your main contact. We have Biennette Perez, who was not, Sadly, not able to attend, um, but you will be able to see her. She works for Little Manila Rising, and then there I am. And so what is our job? And this slide provides you sort of what we, our responsibilities are for. Um, so just to be transparent, what we're supposed to do, and so that you can also hold us accountable in the future. Um, we are expected to really lead the community engagement plan. Um, that is a huge element as part of the transformative plan. Community engagement is one of them. Um, coordinate community engagement activities, and that could entail meeting at, um, you know, town halls, building town halls, uh, developing community events overall, um, that sort of stuff. And another one would be really developing the community coalition bi-monthly meetings, which are, of course, open to everyone. Um, yeah, pretty much open to the public. Um, we're also expected to really coordinate events that are open to the general public to you know, celebrate, to facilitate, to bring in community feedback, 
share resources, and of course, um, provide education. Um, lastly, we're supposed to develop a process to really recruit and point and train residents from the project area to serve as resident representatives on the steering committee, working groups, and of course, the, um, the community coalition. Let me make sure I wanna, I just realized. Okay, enable auto train, there you go. So now let's go into sort of what projects are happening, what project plans are happening or capital projects are happening within TCC. One of them being uh, one of the biggest ones is the Minor Avenue Public Works Program or the Public Works Project. This project um, really encompasses many different grants, many gr different funds, um, and TCC is just a is just a supplement of one of those funds. And if you've ever been down on Minor Avenue in a while, you can see a lot of stuff has been done. Um, you know, Minor Avenue is mainly the responsibility of Stockton Public Works um, Department. Um, um, the idea is to really transform a 10 block thoroughfare, um, incentivizing active transportation and improving connectivity to downtown. Um, and it includes an urban greening component. Um, I gave you some snippets. These are actually firsthand snippets that a lot of folks haven't been able to see. And so um, I just, I know sometimes people get uh, really excited and curious, and I really wanted to give you sort of what it would look like from the start of the process. It's I want to say it's about ninety six percent done, and it's it's getting there. Um, and as you can see, the picture no, it's not your eyes. It is pixelated, and the reason why it's pixelated is because I did not want to um, provide uh, like I didn't want I wanted you guys to get excited to when it actually comes up. Um, and we'll give you sort of a day when they'll be doing a kickoff event and sharing this huge achievement that we've done. Um, but I can definitely tell you the way it looks, it's it's a huge change. Um, it looks really good and it, it definitely focuses on, uh, it's a transformative plan that really focuses on um, urban greening and improving the connectivity in, Doc in Stockton. Projects two and three, this is two part, two sort of project and one. Um, this is the Climate Careers Energy and Water. Um, the, and this is with Rising Sun Center for Opportunity. Um, their job is to uh, install energy, which is one aspect to the um, rising project. And then there's the water project area, which they're installing those saving devices in households and because of um, installing these devices, it really achieves a reduction in utility costs for those residents and significant uh, greenhouse gas reductions. And then project area youth will be recruited to, to employment to implement the project. And that is also another big element to their two projects is they have a workforce development where they work with um, youth, those in um, coming out of high school that you know, want to do something in the summer and into the winter, um, and they provide them really an apprenticeship. Projects four and five, they work the same way as Rising Sun, where it's two and one projects. This is the Stockton Energy for All for from Grid Alternatives. Uh, grid Alternatives install single and multi-family solar systems throughout the project area. And um, there, this idea is to reduce the utility costs for residents and generating um, clean power. This project will also achieve significant greenhouse gas emissions, um, which is what um, GHD stands for. Juelian, thank you so much for attending. Sorry, I apologize if you were in the waiting room for a while. Um, I'm glad you are here. Um, another project, this is number six. This is our urban forest renovation project. And this is teaming up with Stockton Public Works Department, Little Manila Rising, and Puentes. Um, 
their goal is to plant 1,750 trees. Um, and that's throughout the project area. Remember the approximately five square miles. And the idea is to really rebuild their urban canopy. And the associated benefits are carbon sequestration, um, urban heat island migration and workforce development. Um, these words may seem a little um, confusing, but you'll learn more about it. But let's just, let's just say that, you know, trees provide a lot of things and they suck in carbon to shoot out to give us air, to give us oxygen. And that's why they're very important. And they also provide a shade, which is why, um, you know, with urban heat island mitigation, it really breaks down uh, heat to where it provides actual shade to cools the air, cools the area. Seventh project and last project is um, edible schoolyard project. Um, Edible Schoolyard, this is with the Edible Education at Home. The Edible Schoolyard Project is a national organization. They have their own chapter here in Stockton. Um, their job is really to distribute um, community-supported agriculture boxes, and that's on a weekly basis uh, within for residents within the project area. And th these boxes are really, really good. They're really organic. And as you can see in pictures that I provided in the bottom, um, they really fill up your bag. Um, and they, and they do also provide a lot of educational materials on healthy eating. Oh, and that provides a more of a view if you would like to see on um, without the pictures what each entailed. But as you probably see, it's it's a big chunk. We have a lot of big projects. We're doing a lot a lot of great work. Um, and throughout these throughout this time, the idea is to allow the climate leaders to be engaged in the work, to understand the work, be able to speak with the other, to, with a lot of the organizations that are doing the work, uh, and then be able to share with your community on what we're doing. Another big element for this process, in addition to the community outreach and learning about the, uh, the capital projects is how to really come together in synergy and how do we problem solve and how do we come together and um, work in different aspects? You know, you have you have local government, you have community-based organizations, um, you have NGOs. How do you come together to um, reach the goals on really reducing pollution, but also revitalizing um, the economy, the local economy, and also the the environment and the health of the community? And by doing that is we developed a collaborative stakeholder structure. Um, as you know, on the very bottom, that we have the community coalition, which really has a, a, a lot of power, um, a lot of decision-making power, um, because this is where we actually get a lot of the feedback from um, residents. Um, this is an area where a lot of residents can provide sort of um, ideas that they would like to see um, in regards to sort of the TCC process. Um, the, the other, uh, this community coalition is also expected to really be the space for community members to share info, educate and provide updates, but also learn from each other. And we really wanna make sure that you know, we're held accountable and that we are really doing the work that you know, residents need uh, request help in. Um, and that we are able to ensure the alignment of our Stockton Rising implementation and community priorities. Um, next, we of course have our working groups. These working groups are um, very specific um, just because all of them entail um, specific areas each of the partners are um, you know, experts at. So one of the working groups is capital strategies. Um, this is where uh, those who are looking at the capital projects themselves on how they're aligning and making sure it's working pretty well. Um, and, you know, assessing anything that happens within the capital projects and evaluating sort of any things that need to be worked on. Um, that's the capital strategies group. Human engagement. This is pretty much us. Um, you know, you guys are climate leaders, but you guys are a subset of this, you know, this community engagement side. Um, there are 
there could be opportunities for you guys to attend the community engagement meetings where we really work with all of the organizations part of TCC on how we can communicate all of the work that we're doing. Because at the end of the day, it's important to realize you do all the work um, behind the scenes, but how do we share and showcase that to the community? It's very important. Workforce development is also another working group. This one is really tasked to focus on how to bring in um, op job opportunities and building that network of jobs for um, the local economy so that we continue to reinvest in jobs locally for the new economy, which is going towards um, a lot of it going to solar, a lot of it going to green jobs, um, a lot of it's going to electric, um, like electric vehicles. And so how do we prepare our local, for, uh, local workforce um, for the future? Uh, and lastly, we, of course, have the, uh, the administration side, the area that um, provides the really the coordination, the alignment of all of our work together. Now, we, of course, are tracking all of our progress and making sure we're hitting our deliverables. And this is, of course, where we get the administrative support when needed. So that is our collaborative stakeholder structure. And... Through this collaborative stakeholder structure, we, of course, have the, the mandatory consultation process, which really is a feedback loop when it comes to um, our project scopes and, and making sure that we're held accountable on both sides, both the local government side and the partner side, um, and how we communicate with each other to get things going. So, of course, this is how it would work. We would propose change triggers, special meetings of steering committee. Um, you know, and the city partners and the resident representatives, they reach consensus on the decision. Then from that decision, the decision is reviewed by the community coalition, which is, of course, residents and community-based organizations, and they will provide sort of what they think about it. And then lastly, it will go to the city, the partners and the resident representatives to then reconvene and address any concerns by the community coalition, and the process then repeats. Um, lastly, this is the transformative plans. As I talked about before, the community engagement plan is only one element of our transformative plans. Um, we also have the dis displacement avoidance plan to really make sure how do we uh, protect those already live in this community so they don't, aren't uh, displaced. Um, workforce development and economics opportunity plan, and then also the indicator tracking plan. All right, Will, I'll turn it over to you. All right, awesome. So just really quick, uh, just wanted, I know that was a lot of information that you probably all took in. It's a lot of like government and kind of more bureaucratic stuff. Um, so just want you all to know, like this is more for your like inform informative and making sure that you all kind of know where we're coming from. Uh, but you, I don't, at least to my knowledge, aren't expected to know all those little itty bitty uh, details that Jonathan just laid out. But of course, it's always good to know kind of like what the process is like. Um, so just really quick, um, something that I uh, am going to include for our um, uh, post session survey. So uh, I'll kind of go into that a little bit in a little bit more detail, but please write down what I'm about to say, because this will be important. Uh, I started at Public Health Advocates on December 13th, 2021. So all you need to know is just that date, December uh, 13th, 2021, and you're good to go. And this will be important down the road, and I'll explain that later. But just for now, write that date down. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go give you all an overview of what the Climate Leader Program looks like. And so uh, what is a Climate Leader? Well, a Climate Leader is going to is a resident like you who is a resident of the project area and is passionate about the betterment and wellness of their neighborhood. So we're look, uh, and when we were considering who would be a climate leader, we wanted folks who would be organized, responsible, well-known and trusted member who would be interested in learning and learning along with facilitating uh, learning spaces for their neighborhoods. A critical, critical component of this project is partnering with residents to improve access to healthy foods, quality transportation, 
air and water, along with creating learning opportunities and energy saving resources. And as a compensation for your services, uh, you are going to be paid, uh, offered a stipend of $350 for your service. So uh, really awesome opportunities here. So some of the requirements, um, as you all probably uh, know by applying, is that you need to be a resident of the TCC project area, have some community service or leadership or volunteer experience, an interest in learning along with facilitating learning spaces for your community, and a passionate uh, a passion for the betterment and wellness of your community. And so now we get into the fun part, which is your responsibility. So uh, the responsibilities of the program, you will be needing to participate uh, for the duration of the grant, which will be from this month, February 2022, through the end of June 2023. You'll also be required to attend bi-weekly trainings, uh, assist with conducting monthly neighborhood meetings, keep neighborhoods informed on all Stockton Rising projects, and report directly to me with any uh, issues or concerns or suggestions uh, as, as they come up. So what is that? So um, I know we're only just getting started. So what is the next steps going to look like? So um, what I need you all to do is make sure that you do complete the volunteer form, the W-9 tax form, the work plan agreement form that I will be sending out later, and the photo release form. And so again, if you, uh, I will be sending all this information out uh, tomorrow. I would like to get it uh, all this by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, but if you can, please just let me know by email and we can make sure uh, we can arrange something to make sure that you get those uh, materials in. Uh, Nick, I see your hands up. So I just wanna make sure I can answer that really quickly. Um, yeah, with all those, are you going to be sending those to the email to where they can be filled out in the email and sent back? Because I don't have access to a printer. Okay, if you don't have access to a printer, that's no problem. We'll, um, we can work through um, oppor uh, different opportunities um, to get all this information. Uh, just real quick, Nick, I already printed out the forms for you. We just got to coordinate where you can pick them up, sign them, probably scan them via phone and then email them out. Oh, see, perfect. We got Anthony who you, Anthony. offered to help. So awesome. Thanks so much, Anthony. Block, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Anthony, for helping uh, with this. So yeah, yeah um, and like I said, if you do have any issues, um, uh, we have resources available to help. So please just reach out to me uh, and I'm happy to try and coordinate. Um, and Nick, going forward, maybe we can coordinate with Anthony together uh, in the case that he's not able to provide any of those resources. Um, in addition, we do have the pre-survey questionnaire, so uh, we do need folks to fill that out uh, ASAP, so uh, we'll have a link to that. And then in addition to the pre-survey questionnaire, we'll also have a post-session survey uh, for which only pertains to this specific training session, whereas the pre-survey questionnaire is about be, uh, your thoughts and feelings uh, that we want to kind of gather data from before we start this program. So uh, please fill out both, but for the post-session survey, that's where that um, date of December 13th, 2021 comes into play. Uh, that'll be kind of like, a, for, for every post-session um, survey, I will have a little pop quiz question, just something fun, doesn't have to be anything related to the work that we're doing as climate leaders, but something to make sure that uh, you are paying attention. And uh, you know, if you do miss a, training, we want to make sure that you are following uh, along. So that's kind of why it's there. Um, so with that, uh, please try and get that uh, those forms signed to me ASAP, um, ideally nine o'clock tomorrow morning. But again, if there's any issues, uh, Nick and Anthony, I know that you need to coordinate. So um, I'm aware of that now. Uh, but if you do have any other issues, if anyone else has issues, please let, the, let me know ASAP. Um, our next meeting will be on Wednesday, February 23rd at 5 p.m. And we're going to be starting kind of like the, we're going to start ramping up by covering climate issues. Uh, the first being uh, air pollution uh, in Stockton. And so all of this will be sent to your emails after this meeting. Um, I want to try to get everything together. So my hope is that with technology, we can uh, get all this out to you tomorrow morning as well. Um, but if not, we'll. Um, we'll keep you updated and hopefully get a recording of this meeting along with all those forms to you uh, as soon as we can. So with that, happy to answer any questions either to me or Jonathan, or if you have questions in general, now's the time to ask. Uh, Rain? 
Hi, so it's in terms of filling out the documents too. So I also noticed in the email earlier that it said to print, fill out, and send a PDF scan. And I was wondering if it was okay if instead that I use an app called Kami. I don't know if you've ever used it before. So instead of printing it out, I can just annotate it online and then send a PDF of that. Yeah, no, what, however you want to get uh, sign it and, you know, get the document signed and filled out and sent back to me, uh, I will take it. Even if it's just like a picture, for example, um, as long as you print, you know, you have your signature and your name on there um, and whatever else we are looking for on that on those documents to be filled out. That's all that matters to us. OK, just want to make sure. Thank yeah, you. Of course. But thank you for bringing that up. I know that there's tons of new like scanning apps available. So whether it's on like a computer or phone. So if you have re access to those, um, you know, feel free to use them as long as we just get those forms back filled. Uh, Rain, is your hand up for another question or is that still up? Oh, it's still up. I'll take it off now. Thank okay, you. Okay, no worries. Just making sure. Um, anyone else have any other questions? All right. Well, I mean, I'm very excited to be working with all of you. And I hope that, you know, as we go through this program, it's not going to be as a, a kind of like overview, but you'll definitely learn a lot more direct skills. My hope is also that at some point we can start doing these, conducting these uh, sessions in person. And so please be uh, on the lookout for that as we uh, uh, get into that. Um, for that, uh, for now, since we, uh, you know, we're starting, why don't we go into some uh, breakout sessions just really quick and, uh, you know, get the opportunity to introduce ourselves to uh, the other uh, climate leaders. So, uh, Jonathan, if you're able to kind of break everyone up into different breakout rooms, and then, yeah, we'll just take it from there. Yeah, and the the idea also is to provide sort of a space for reflection on like, you know, what are some ideas people have had? Uh, what are some people are doing right now in terms of projects? Or are they interested in doing some projects? Maybe there's going to, there could be some synergy when it comes to anything you guys can collaborate with on anything. Um, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people that may have something to think about, or there are others that may think that they, um, they there's not something that's out there for them, but maybe there's a climate leader that does. Um, Deb, great. Thank you so much, Rain. That's actually really good. That's, that's also what we wish to have is having the space where everyone can share new resources, cool things so that they can use, um, especially free stuff. Everyone likes free, um, free apps. Um, so, okay, let me try to do just breakouts breakout rooms. We will do two breakout rooms. Um, I'm hoping um, that Will and I are in separate rooms and we will go from there. Let's see, Will is in one area and yes, okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm cool. You just want to make sure I said your name right. 